Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live in the States with James Jacob Prash. And by the way, folks, uh, if you want to check on, if you live in the United States and you would like to check on Jacob's schedule, I will post that on Morial TV Facebook. And please go to morial.org if you would like to see uh, Jacob speak if it's in a town near yours. Uh, Jacob, uh, unless the Lord builds the house, it cannot stand. Case and study, Bill Hybels. The fall of Bill Hybels, once again, unless the Lord builds a house, it cannot stand. Or as some versions translated, unless the Lord builds a house, the laborers labor in vain or build in vain. But unless the Lord builds a house, it cannot stand. In the seven churches of Revelation, the letter that Jesus gives to John by the angel for the church in Ephesus was a warning that the Lord would remove its lamp from its lampstand if they didn't repent and return to their first love. This has been a painful reality throughout the history of the church. So many churches, so many movements I hate to use the term, but denominations, they morph into that. They begin right, but they end badly. Even ones that were apostolic, literally planted by the apostles like Ephesus, like Rome, they become something bad. Well, it's a tragedy when a good church becomes a bad one. It's a tragedy. Uh, and it's a living tragedy. What became of Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, the flagship church of the Calvary Chapel movement under my friend, now with the Lord, Chuck Smith, a man who I had a high regard for and I like very much. Now there's an open departure from his teaching on things like prophecy and a schmoozing, a rapprochement with things that Chuck Smith never would have approved of. Going in the seeker-sensitive direction, the Rick Warren market-driven church or, or purpose-driven lie direction, other such things. Greg Laurie in bed with Hillsong the same way. Another example would be Calvary Chapel for Fort Lauderdale. Under Bob Coy, what happened when his head rolled? But these were not churches that were wrong. These were churches that were right. And they went off under leadership that deviated from the word of God. Often going into immorality in some cases. But remember, just like nations, churches get the leaders they deserve. There's a market for the product. It's not just like a bad person came and misled the church. Paul warned the elders in Ephesus in the book of Acts, after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, but even from among yourselves, okay, it's going to happen. Chuck Smith knows sooner left that people with a different agenda and different doctrine than he had, got control of Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa is technically no longer a Calvary Chapel. In terms of the Calvary Chapel Association, they have their own thing called globalism. So unfortunate. These are good churches that go off on the leaders, but it's not only the fault of the leaders, it's the fault of the laity, the people because there was a market for that product. Well, 
that's one kind of situation. It happened in Westminster Chapel in London, England. The pulpit of Martin Lloyd Jones, Campbell Morgan, was desecrated, desecrated by R. T. Kendall, who partnered with the homosexual alcoholic, the drunken pervert Paul Kane. He went into the whole counterfeit revival of Toronto and so forth. Now I say this as somebody who's not a cessationist. I do believe in the gifts of the spirit, the charismatic gifts. I just don't believe most of what we see today is authentic or scriptural. But I don't deny what's in scripture. But this counterfeit revivals like Toronto and what was being pushed by the Kansas City false prophets, by immoral men, Bob Jones, Paul Kane, proven false prophets like Mike Nickel. Um, this is what R.T. Kendall went into. A good church became a bad one, just like what happened in so many places. What Paul warned about, what, G what Paul warned about in Ephesus, and what Jesus warned about in Ephesus, in the book of Revelation, and Paul in the book of Acts. Tragic when this happens, but it's historically happened many times, and it's happening today. Maybe with an increased frequency, I'm sorry to say. I'm really sorry. God blessed and used Bob Coy. God blessed and used Chuck Smith. You know, God blessed and used Greg Laurie. At one point, they were right. Then things went off. Chuck Smith didn't go off, but his succession was off and is off. So, that's one kind of situation. But then we have another kind of situation. The Lord must build the house where it cannot stand. It may be a tragedy what happened in Westminster Chapel in London. When Martin Lloyd-Jones and Campbell Morgan once preached before R.T. Kendall got a hold of it. A tragedy, a shame what happened at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa where Chuck Smith once preached before Brian Broderson got a hold of it. Or more tragically, when somebody who began right goes off and had been off for some time, like what transpired very, very <coughs> painfully in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay. But then we have the house that the Lord never built. It is not a tragedy that the Crystal Cathedral of Robert Schuller failed $156 million in debt. That was not a tragedy. That was not a good church that went wrong. That was a church that the Lord did not build. Schuller built it based on marketing, based on positive thinking psychology that he got from the Freemason. Norman Vincent Peale from Marble Collegiate Church in Manhattan. That was a house the Lord did not build. It was never built on the Word of God. Schroeder went down the ecumenical road, said we should ask the pedophile protecting Pope the way home when he came to Los Angeles. Schroeder said he wouldn't mind if his grandchildren became Muslims when he gave his pulpit over to the Islamic Grand Mufti of Damascus. That was a house the Lord never built. Who cares? It's not a tragedy. It was never meant to stand anyway. The Crystal Cathedral was meant to collapse. The Catholic Church bought it for a song. Schuller went out of business. That's what he was in, business a bankrupt business to the tune of $156 million. Is that a tragedy? No. It's what should have happened. Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, that's a tragedy. Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, that's a tragedy. Westminster Chapel in London, that's a tragedy. Crystal Cathedral, that's no tragedy. 
good. I'm glad. The Lord never built that house. I see one after the other. Once the freak show is over, people go find the next freak show. We've said this many times. What's left of the airport vineyard church in Toronto, Canada, John Arnott? The freak show is over, not then. What's left of Brownsville Assemblies of God in Pensacola after the split and the financial scandal? Nothing. The show's over. Lakeland, Florida. What's left? Nothing. The show's over. Who cares? It's not a tragedy. It's what should have happened. It's exactly what should happen. You can build a church using marketing, using entertainment instead of worship, using motivational speaking instead of exposition of God's word, using hype instead of anointing. You can build a church on that stuff, but you can't make it stand. Well, now another one has hit the wall. Willow Creek. Greater Chicago. I only met him very briefly once at O'Hare Airport. We were on the same flight over from the UK to the States. Bill Hybels announced yesterday that he was leaving the ministry instead of seeing his tenure through. He was quitting six months early than he was tentatively scheduled to. Why? Why couldn't he hang on for another six months? There's no health issue because of the scandal. When he was first accused of improper behavior with women over a period of many years, decades, he said it was flat lies. Now all of a sudden it's mostly lies. <laughs> And he apologized to saying his reaction was defensive instead of making it a learning experience. We believe. And the women give accounts. He'd fondle me and kiss my stomach and all of this stuff and say inappropriate things to women and things like this. I don't know all what he did and I don't care. I don't care. I'm just sorry for the sake of the body of Christ and our testimony it gets into the public medium. But hey, Jim Baker and the Crouches and TBN have done so much to make born again a household joke and disgrace the name of the Lord publicly. Please, God, before you let me bring shame to your name and discredit the gospel, take me out of the ministry today rather than I go that way. Because if they can do it, I can do it. I'd rather be out of the ministry today than discredit the body of Christ and the message of the gospel the way that they did. We all know what happened with Jimmy Swaggart. Another tragedy. He was publicly hanging other people for something he was doing himself. And then he goes out and does it again. Now he's still back in ministry, playing his piano. This is all hypocrisy. This church is largely empty, just a fraction of what it used to be. Well, that's a tragedy. But Willow Creek is no tragedy. Willow Creek is justice. Willow Creek is not the consequence of something that went wrong, like Jimmy Swaggart. Willow Creek is the consequence of something that was never right to begin with. It's the consequence of something that was always wrong. After the September 11th Islamic attacks on New York, 
Bill Hybels brings in a Muslim clergyman to explain Islam to Christians after September 11th. Not reciprocal, find me a mosque that will allow an evangelist to preach the gospel. His wife, Lynn Hybels, is part of the consortium of supposed evangelicals who campaign against Israel at Christ at the Czech Post conferences, trying to make Israel the villain, turning their back on the persecuted church throughout the Islamic world, ignoring the fact that Israel is the only country in the Middle East protecting the religious liberty and lives of Arab Christians compared to what happens in surrounding Islamic countries to believers, particularly Iran, and the Persian Gulf, and they pick on Israel. This is Lynn Hybels, the Islamic clergyman in the pulpit explaining Islam. That place should drop dead. It had no right to exist. It's not just that I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. That's true. If somebody persecutes the true church, they make themselves the enemy of Christ. And if somebody persecutes Israel, they make themselves the enemy of the God of Israel. That's all true. But the place was never right to begin with. Hybels had women in teaching positions. When he was investigated by the eldership of the church, three of the elders left because they said the investigation was not conclusive or carried out in a proper manner. Now he's got a woman, Heather Larson, replacing him as senior pastor. The feminism of the world in Willow Creek. Again, I would refer people to our teaching the spirit of Jezebel and the spirit of Ahab. Leadership is male. Women should teach other women. Senior pastor should be a male. But he's being succeeded by a woman because he's resigning six months early that he can no longer dismiss as flat lies the allegations made against him. Now it's mostly untrue or something like this, he's saying. If it was no big deal, he could hang on another six months, but it obviously is a big deal. He's had elders resigning. Not only that, he's had the people who surround him going public, saying what happened. Again, another scandal to discredit the church. I am glad Willow Creek is in this crisis because the Lord did not build that place. Bill Hybels did. I have mentioned before one of the most hypocritical episodes I have ever witnessed within what is supposed to be the body of Christ, bearing in mind that Hybels was some kind of a chaplain or, or spiritual advisor to Bill Clinton during the Lewinsky scandal, when Bill Clinton was using the Oval Office for perverse acts, inserting cigars into an obviously troubled young woman the age of his daughter approximately, and it was all sick and perverted, I'm sorry. But I don't want to go into the details any further than I have. And then he lies about it. He's disbarred for perjury. And of course, the mainstream media was all right with it, but so was Bill Hybels. He has Clinton addressing his leadership conference for pastors. 5,000 evangelical pastors, 5,000, come to Willow Creek to hear Bill Clinton speak about leadership. Twice, not once, but twice, as did Barack Obama. 
vote for partial birth abortion. Twice, Bill Clinton vetoed legislation against partial birth abortion. Will you do an extraction of the fetus through a birth canal? Once in the process of being dragged out of its mother, you do a insertion of a suction catheter through the cranium. In other words, you bore a hole through the baby's skull and put in a vacuum hose and suck the baby's brains out when it's being dragged out of its mother. Even many, many pro-abortion people were against this procedure, a late-term partial birth abortion. Twice it was vetoed by Slick Willie, Bill Clinton. Of those 5,000 worthless hirelings, those shameful cowards, 5,000 religious hypocrites, so-called pastors at that conference. Not one of them, not one of them questioned or challenged Clinton on partial birth abortion or Hybels for having him there. This is a perjurer. He pled guilty to perjury. He was a sexual deviant. He did things that aren't even normal. It's a pervert. This was Bill Heibel's ministry. No, it's not a tragedy. It's the natural consequence of building a house instead of letting the Lord build it. When it's built on doctrinal error and the ideas of men. The whole Rick Warren thing, it came from Peter Drucker's the same. Marketing. Schuler, so much of what's come out of Fuller Theological Seminary, Cum Cemetery, Idols. No, it's not a tragedy. It was the natural, inevitable result of what happens to a house that the Lord did not build. I don't hate Bill Hybels. I hate what he is. I hate what he did. I hate what his wife does. And I realize they're reaping the consequences of it. And that church will reap the consequences of it. And he crowns a queen as pastor, a female. It'll continue in the same vein of something that is priceless, no matter what they profess. It's not under the headship of Christ. A church that has a female senior pastor is not under the headship of Jesus Christ. And so it goes. For his own sake, I hope Bill Hybels repents. For my sake, may Jesus take me out of the ministry before I bring disgrace to his name in that manner. Because I'm just as capable of it as Mr. Hybels, I assure you. It's only the hand of God that will keep me from going off. And it's only the hand of God that will keep you from going off. <laughs> No, I don't hate him. I just hate what he is, hate what he did. And I hate Willow Creek Church. Unless the Lord builds a house, it cannot stand. Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, Westminster Chapel, London, these things are tragedies. These were good churches. They never should have went the way they did. What happened in Fort Lauderdale with Bob Coy never should have happened. It's a shame. It's a disgrace. It's a heartbreaking tragedy. I'm sorry. I grieve over those churches. These things never should have happened. 
but Brownsville? The airport vineyard? The Crystal Cathedral? Willow Creek? What happened is exactly what should have happened. What transpired was exactly what was meant to transpire. The laborers labor in vain. Go ahead, Heather Larson. Keep it up. You do it. But you're laboring in vain. You're not under the headship of Christ or you wouldn't be the senior pastor. Leadership is male. The builders labor in vain. And so it is. We ought not be surprised. My name is James Jacob Prash. Thank you for listening.